Hello everyone, welcome to our latest video all about Android reverse engineering and penetration testing. Today, we're embarking on a journey to uncover the secrets behind APK file storage locations and understand the way to extract apps both pre-installed and user-installed. Let's jump right in. On Android devices, where an app is installed and any extra settings during installation play a role in determining the storage location. We're about to take a meticulous look at these distinctive storage spots. Let's dissect them one by one. But before we proceed, let's establish a connection with my Android virtual device using the ADB connect command. Then, by running ADB devices, we can verify if our device is successfully connected or not. Now, let me run the ADB shell command to transition into shell mode using this prepares us to thoroughly explore the storage locations of APK files. Let's start with the data slash app directory. To get a glimpse of the files and directories within, simply run the ls-l command. Running the ls-l command prompts a permission denied error. To overcome this, we'll elevate to super user mode with the su command. This location is where user-installed apps find their place. A closer examination of the file permissions unveils intriguing insights. Take a look at this highlighted passage, showcasing that these files are world-readable. This means anyone can copy them without the need for elevated privileges. This glimpse into the world of APK files beneath the data slash app directory showcases their world-readable permissions, providing us with a captivating peek into the Android app landscape. Now, let's journey over to the system slash app directory. This is where the apps that come bundled with the system image find their residence. Let's take a closer look at the file permissions governing these apps within this directory. A quick overview reveals that all these files are also set as world readable. This means that anyone can duplicate them without needing additional privileges. This snapshot lays bare the world-readable permissions that characterize the APK files in the system slash app directory. It's an insightful glimpse into how the Android system stores and manages its bundled apps. Now, let's take a look at the data slash app private directory. When we run the ls-l command here, it doesn't reveal any visible content. However, this is the space where apps that demand an extra layer of copy protection on the device typically reside. For users without the necessary privileges, copying apps from this location isn't straightforward. Yet, if we gain root access to the device, it's still possible to extract these APKs, granting us access to their contents. This adds an intriguing layer of security and access control for these specific apps. Extracting Android Apps, a step-by-step -step guide. Now, let's explore the process of extracting an app from the device. This process essentially breaks down into three simple steps. First, we have to find the package name. Second, we need to locate the APK path. Third, pulling it out. Let's put this into practice. Allow me to demonstrate with an example from my Android device, which is running on VirtualBox. Example of extracting pre-installed apps. If we happen to know the app's name, we can deploy ADB shell PM list packages, then give a pipe, and then run grep, here mention, what you want to locate. This action unveils the precious package name we're looking for. With the package name in hand, the next stride involves discovering the path of the associated APK. This can be accomplished using ADB shell PM path, then paste the path of the package. As expected, it is located under the system slash app directory since it is a pre-installed application. The final piece of the puzzle involves pulling it out from the device. We achieve this by executing the ADB pull, here mention the path. After extracting, locate the app in the Kali home directory. Now, let's take a quick example of extracting user installed apps. This process follows a similar trajectory as with pre-installed apps. If we know the name of the app, we can use the previous commands to extract user-installed apps. However, in my Android VirtualBox emulator, there aren't any user-installed apps yet. 
I'll address this by manually installing one. But, there's a catch, the emulator lacks the Play Store. Therefore, we'll need to install the apps from the browser. So, how can we obtain an APK file? If we want to acquire a specific APK file of our choice, we can download it directly by visiting the Play Store webpage. Next, search for the desired application, and upon finding it in the search results, click on any of the listings. Simply copy the app's ID or complete URL from the URL bar of the browser. Then, visit http apps.evoz.com slash apk downloader and paste the copied ID or URL. This enables you to download the APK file. Let me download it. Now, we can install the downloaded APK file on the Android device using the ADB install command. Now, the application is installed, and we are ready to continue our example. To find the package name of the application installed by the user. First, let me run ADB shell PM list packages then give a pipe, and then run grep, here mention, what you want to locate. Well, as you can see, we have got the package name. We can use the ADB shell PM path, then paste the path of the package, to find its APK path. In this scenario, the APK resides in the data slash app directory, as it's a user installed application. Lastly, we can extract this app from the device using the ADB pool, and then paste the path of the APK file. It is much like we did earlier with pre-installed apps. After extracting, locate the app in the Kali home directory. Additionally, if you navigate to the data slash Dalvik cache directory after running the ADB shell command, you might come across optimized DEX files. In the x86-64 architecture within the data Dalvik cache directory, you have two subdirectories, x86 and x86-64. These directories contain the optimized.dex, Dalvik executable, files and the verification data files, .vdex, for various apps and frameworks. These optimized DEX files are created on an app's first run to enhance app performance. This process, known as DEXOPT, that occurs during Android OS's initial startup. VDEX stands for Verification Data Files. VDEX files are used in the newer Android runtime environment, ART. Starting from Android 5.0 Lollipop, ART replaced Dalvik as the default runtime. VDEX files are part of the ARTS compilation and optimization process. Each app or framework has its associated DEX file, which contains the compiled code, and a corresponding .vdex file, which contains verification data to speed up the app's loading process. This provides a comprehensive understanding of how apps are structured and managed on the Android system. One important point to note is that the location of APK files might differ slightly on the latest versions of Android devices. In my testing emulator, each APK possesses its own directory within data slash app for user installed apps and system slash app for pre-installed ones. This ensures a more organized and manageable file structure. This provides a comprehensive understanding of how apps are structured and managed on the Android system. In this video, we've provided a comprehensive understanding of APK file storage locations and the extraction process. In the upcoming video, we will delve into the exploration of Android app components. Stay tuned for this exciting content. Should you have any inquiries or doubts regarding the covered material, please don't hesitate to drop a comment in the dedicated comment section below the video. Your engagement is greatly appreciated.